Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel where today we are going to be making dice as usual, this time doing some different tests with dirty pours. So let's just jump into it. I'm doing four different color combinations and eight molds for this. The first two dice that I'm doing will be Petri dirty pours, both with opaque bases. So one is getting a black base with just resin resin paste and one is getting a white base also with just resin resin paste. So a Petri dirty pour refers to a dirty pour where you are primarily using alcohol ink. You can do this on a clear or colored base. I just prefer the colored base. So you can see I'm doing one drop of my translucent alcohol ink with one drop of Pinata Blanco Blanco white alcohol ink over top of it. This is personally my preferred style of dirty pour. And then you just kind of let them sit for a little while. I'm doing the same thing with the white, but this time with pink, purple, and blue alcohol ink. And then for each of these, we are going to do one pour where we are swirling our hand in little circles and one pour where we are just straight dumping it. And here I'm getting started on my third color combination. This was supposed to be a cream and lilac turned into more of a pink and lilac, but I'm just mixing two opaque colors, a peachy cream and a lilac with just resin resin pastes and then setting those to the side while I do my actual pour for my petri dirty pours. And as I mentioned, for this first dice, I am spinning my hand in small, slow little circles. Looks a bit faster than it is because the footage is sped up. And for the second dice mold, I am doing something that feels horribly wrong and just straight up pouring my resin in without making any little circles whatsoever. And I'll be doing the same thing for this color combination here. This time I started with just dumping the colors straight into my mold without swirling them at all. And then in the D6, I will be doing, once again, just slow little circles with my hand. And while I did kind of run out of ink toward the end of this, you can see it's just on its last legs, that actually gave me some pretty cool effects. So I wasn't mad about it, but I was worried about it during the pour. For our third color, these two opaque resin paste mixes, I am just pouring over a little bit of clear resin on each side. You can do this with any colored resin whatsoever, whether it's resin paste or mica powders or anything like that. And for my fourth color combination, I'm using mica powders, which is actually how I started off learning about dirty pours where I am just kind of carefully mixing them into some clear resin with a toothpick. So they're not going to be fully saturating the clear resin, but they will be most of the way through it. So I'm mixing those in the best I can without getting them blended together too much, putting those ones to the side and then pouring that third color. Again, with the first pour, I am spinning my hand in slow little circles. And for the second pour into my D4 mold, I am just straight up dumping the color without trying to spin or rotate my hand whatsoever. And we're finally to the last color combination, but I decided to play around a little bit more. So I actually ended up doing a drop of translucent red alcohol ink on top of the kind of black section a drop of Pinata's gold alcohol ink on top of the red section, and then figured, screw it, we've done a lot already, so why not add two little drops of Pinata Blanco Blanco? But also then I poured off the beginning little bit so that I didn't end up with a whole ton of white ink at the bottom of one of my molds. Don't want that. And finally, the last pour, first dice, we are doing little slow circles with our hand, trying to get these really cool squiggles and color division. And then into the second mold, I will be just straight up dumping the resin, trying to keep my hand as still as possible, not swirling or mixing at all. And then we were finished with the pouring. These went into the pressure pot overnight. 24 hours later, it was time to do the demold. So I'm uncapping all of my molds, pulling off all of the excess flashing and sprues, and then it's time to show you the results, which I think all look really cool. So this is our D6. If you remember, this is a Petri Dirty Pour, and this is the one where I was rotating my hand, but was running out of the ink toward the end. And that is opposed to this D12, which was the same color combination, but I poured it first and I did not do any squiggles, circles, rotation of my hand whatsoever. 
So you can see that in the ones where I did the circles with my hand, such as this D8 right here, you get this really consistent, cool, squiggly color separation that Dirty Pores are infamous for. That's kind of the whole point of this technique is to get these squiggles. Whereas this was once again a dump where I didn't move it and I was surprised that I still got a decent amount of color separation. Definitely more big sections of just the black base and a bit more concentrated color. But overall, I was very impressed. This D20, once again, was one where I circled my hand, and then this D4 was one where I just dumped it straight in. You can see from the D4, the straight dump has a bit more color separation half and half as the colors were in the cup. And then finally, with this D20, this is where we were squiggling it. This was kind of our chaos pour with the mica powder, the alcohol ink, all of the stuff. I think it's gorgeous. I think this turned out really well. I'm glad I didn't regret throwing a bunch more in. And then this is the D10 where we just straight dumped our resin in, no circles whatsoever, although still got some really, really great squiggles with that white alcohol ink. So yeah, this was a lot of fun. I had a blast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. If you have any ideas for future videos you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!